of the website www.islam21c.com. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We have been talking about the first chapter, the chapter of Ikhlas, and you were explaining how Ikhlas and Tawheed cannot be separated. And you started to go into how Ikhlas should be something ingrained in us in every action that we do. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. The first hadith of this chapter is hadith Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said actions are judged by intention. Innama al-a'malu bin niyat. And each person will get whatever he intended. فَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَةُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ The one who is migrating for the sake of Allah Jalla wa'ala, he will be migrating to Allah and his messenger. And the one who is migrating for anything other than Allah Jalla wa'ala. فَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَةُهُ إِلَى دُنْيَا If he is migrating to dunya or to get married to a wife, then he will get what he migrated to. Now, as we said that this hadith, we need to explain this hadith. It will take us hours and hours, days and days, months. In fact, this hadith is our life. But because of the nature of the program, we need to carry on. And some main elements of this hadith will be explained as well, inshallah, while we explain the other hadith. So we need to move to the second hadith, inshallah. حديث عائشة رضي الله تعالى عنها. إن شاء الله. عائشة رضي الله عنها has revealed that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said a lashkar or an army will advance towards the Kaaba and when it reaches the plain of Bayda' Medina the entire lashkar will be devoured by the earth. Whereupon she said, Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم, why those who were unwillingly accompanying the lashkar and those who did not belong to the Lashkar should suffer. The Holy Prophet وسلم, replied, The whole army will be swallowed up by the earth, but on the Day of Judgment, they will be raised according to their motives. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. Imam al-Nawi mentioned this hadith as the second hadith in this chapter, Al-Ikhlas. In this hadith, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said that the Prophet وسلم, said that there will be an army in the future. And this is part of the unseen that the Prophet ﷺ was given the knowledge of by Allah Jalla wa'ala. The Prophet ﷺ was not given the knowledge of unseen unconditionally. No. Allah Jalla wa'ala told him about certain things. The Prophet ﷺ said one time when he heard a singer, a young girl singing that وَفِينَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي غَدِي and we have our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, who knows what is in the future. The Prophet وسلم, said, no, 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 stop. لا يعلم ما في غد إلا الله. No one knows what will come in the future except Allah. Allah جل وعلا praised himself in ayat al-Kursi. يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم. What will come and what happen. Or what they will do. The only one. Yes, and no one can encompass the knowledge of Allah Jalla wa'ala except with the permission of Allah Jalla wa'ala. So Allah Jalla wa'ala informed Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam of a few things that will happen in the future. Among them that there will be an army that try to attack Kaaba. Okay? Now, when, who, how, is it this army, that army, some scholars mentioned that when Abdullah ibn Zubair was put in siege in Kaaba and then the army of Al-Hajjaj was going to attack Al-Kaaba, people were watching whether this army will be swallowed by the earth and it was not the case. Yeah. So getting into these details is not that useful, in fact. But we need to understand what is the gesture of this hadith. The gesture of this hadith that this army, obviously, it is an evil army. Of course. Doing something very evil. Because no one attacks Kaaba, or no one wants to attack Kaaba, except this person is an evil person. Okay? So the whole army is evil. But, with this evil army, who is the most evil person in the army? Is the leader. The leader. And those who went with him willingly, they want also to participate in attacking Al-Kaaba. 
say they are also evil. However, maybe some servants, some laborers, some people who maybe were forced to go, yeah, they have no clue about what this army is intending to do, yeah, or they might have a clue but they don't want. Well, they don't so have a choice. They might not have a choice. So their intention is what? Is to attack Kaaba? No. So their intention is bad. However, they committed something bad. Those who know. They should not have joined the army if they know that the army is going to attack Kaaba. Yeah? So the Prophet ﷺ said in the middle of the desert in Al Bayda, either Al Bayda refers to a desert outside Medina or Al Bayda desert in general. Allah Jalla wa ala will command the earth and the earth will split and swallow them. Obviously, because Allah Jalla wa ala wants to protect his house. And this house cannot be attacked by anyone like this. Okay? Now, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said, Ya Rasulullah, how are they going to be swallowed? All of them, including the servants, including those who went with them with no intention to attack Kaaba, all of them are going to be swallowed, which is a kind of punishment in the dunya. So the Prophet ﷺ said, yes, this is what will happen. And on the day of resurrection, each person will be resurrected according to his or her intention. So here, the intention is the key deciding factor in what? In what will happen to the person in the Akhirah. So it complements what we have discussed in the first hadith about what? About intention and the role of intention. Okay? It will complement that. Moreover, it will say that although the intention of the person might be good in the dunya, yet he did something wrong, yeah? he might receive any kind of punishment and the punishment might be in the dunya. Mm -hmm. Okay? And this confirms what have been revealed in number of ayat that Allah Jalla wa Ala prohibited us Hmm? to join the enemies of Allah or those who are going to do evil things even by joining their sawad. Their sawad means their gathering. Even if we are not going to do what they want to do. Okay? And there is a hadith that the one who increases the sawad of the people, the gathering of people, he will be among them. Yeah? Allah Jalla wa Ala says in the Quran, وَاتَّقُوا فِتْنَةً لَا تُصِيبَنَّ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا مِنْكُمْ خَاصَّةً And avoid being part of a fitna that will not afflict the ظَلَمُوا The ظَالِمِين The unjust people alone, it will include everyone. Mm -hmm. Everyone who is a part of it. Everyone who is part of it. Even if he did not intend to do the fitna or to participate in the fitna. That's why in the story of Al-A'raf, when Allah Jalla wa Ala mentioned the people of Bani Israel, the people of Bani Israel were prohibited to fish on Saturday. Okay? But Allah Jalla wa Ala wanted to test them. So Allah Jalla wa Ala used to send fish on Saturday in front of them. Mm -hmm. And on other days, there is no fish. Yeah? Okay, we'll continue, inshallah, after the break. Brothers and sisters, please return to us after the break for the continuation of this story and to continue learning about the first chapter of the book, Riyadh al Salihin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> Verses, awakening contents. Unlock your hearts 
let us start to reflect and interact with the glorious Quran through simple and interactive grammar exercises. Explore the secrets of success that exist in the blessed lines of the Holy Quran. Using what you recite every day and night, learn 250 words that occur 55,000 times or 70% words of the Quran. Let's understand the Quran. Let's join Dr. Abdul Aziz Abdul Rahim in Let's Understand the Quran every Saturday at 4 p.m. and repeat telecast at 2.30 a.m. India on Peace TV. I'm your brother in Islam, Hossein Yi from Malaysia, and you are watching Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Pearls of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Abdullah bin Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that the Prophet, may peace be upon him, said, Truthfulness leads to albir, that is, piety, righteousness, and every act of obedience to Allah, and albir leads to paradise, and a man keeps on telling the truth until he becomes a Siddiq, that is, a truthful person. Falsehood leads to Al-Fujur, that is, wickedness, evil doing, etc. And Al-Fujur leads to the hell fire. And a man keeps on telling lies till he is written as a liar before Allah. Sahih Al-Bukhari, Volume 8 Book of Manners, Hadith number 6094. Most countries of the world ban bullying. They fight it in their schools and universities. A lot of us are being bullied differently every single day. Some come up to us and say, do this, while others say, don't you dare. Some say this is halal, while others say, nope. This is haram. Haram, haram, haram. Are you confused? Are you confused? Do you feel lost? Join me in Umdat al Ahkam, where, with the grace of Allah, we will learn the proper knowledge from the Quran and from the Sunnah, which would help stop this kind of bullying. Join Asim al Hakim in Umdat al Ahkam next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, brothers and sisters, to this discussion between Sheikh Haitham and myself on the first chapter of the book, Riyad al Salihin, which is on ikhlas. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You were just going through the story in the Surah Al A'raf. Al A'raf, yes. In the story of Al A'raf, when Allah Jalla wa Ala mentioned the people of Bani Israel. The people of Bani Israel were prohibited to fish on Saturday. Okay? But Allah Jalla wa Ala wanted to test them. So Allah Jalla wa Ala used to send fish on Saturday in front of them. Mm -hmm. And on other days, there is no fish. Yeah? So Allah Jalla wa Ala said, وَيَوْمَ لَا يُسْبُتُونَ لَا تَأْتِي Okay? This is what Allah Jalla Ala mentioned in the ayah. That on Saturday, they see the fish in front of them. Because they are prohibited to fish. On other days, they don't have fish. So what did they do? They dig trenches on the side of the sea. So when the fish comes on Saturday, it will fall in those trenches. They did not say that they are fishing. On other days, once Sabbath or Saturday is finished, is over, they go and take them. Mm -hmm. So this is a deception. So now the people, the rabbis and the scholars and the religious people and the scholars from their people, not the Muslim scholars, from their people, they were divided into two groups. 
One group said, لما تعظون قوما إلا هم هلكم ومعذبهم عذابا شديدا. Why are you preventing people from doing something and you know that they are not going to listen and you know that Allah will punish them. The other group, what did they say? قالوا معذرة إلى ربكم لعلهم يتقون. We are doing this as what? As an excuse for ourselves before Allah. And maybe they will listen. وَلَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَّقُونَ Yes? Allah Jalla wa'ala said, فَلَمَّا نَسُوا مَا ذُكِّرُوا بِهِ أَنْجَيْنَا الَّذِينَ يَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ السُّوءَ وَأَخَذْنَا الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا بِعَذَابٍ بَئِيسٍ بِمَا كَانُوا يَفْسُقُونَ Okay? After that, what happened? We have saved those who used to what? To forbid the evil and enjoin the good. And those who never participated in this, they will be punished. So, in Islam, it is prohibited to what? To participate in even increasing the number of oppressors, even if you are not going to be part of them. Yeah? Because this will give them an emotional support. Mm -hmm. Yeah? It will give them encouragement. In any way, it will benefit them. It will benefit them and it will give them an indication that they are on the haqq. Mm -hmm. Yeah? That's why the land will swallow this army that is going to attack Medina. Now, some people were righteous people there. Some people were not joining them because of this evil thing. Allah Jalla wa will resurrect everyone based on his or her intention. And this shows the importance of intention. Mm -hmm. And it shows as well that although your intention is good, outwardly, don't participate in something that is evil. Yeah? And don't say my intention was good. You yeah, contradict. Yes. So this now introduces another important principle. That there should be no contradiction between your outward appearance or what you do or your actions and your intention. You cannot do something bad claiming that you are intending something good or you are not intending this bad thing. This is one thing. On the other side, the beauty of Sharia says that if the person was forced to do something bad against his intention, Allah will not punish him because Allah will punish the person based on his intention of doing something evil. However, Allah Jalla wa might include him in the dunya punishment, might in certain circumstances. But in general, if he did not do the evil thing and it was done against his will, yeah, in the akhirah, he will be free from the blame. Subhanallah. And this is the beauty of what? Of intention. So, Intention will increase the reward of the person and intention will decrease the reward of the person. Intention is the deciding factor where the person is going to be rewarded or not. Yeah? Extremely so two things. It will decide whether the person is going to be rewarded or not. One. Secondly, it will be the deciding factor whether the action of the person will receive this much amount of reward or that much of reward. Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak used to say, many big deeds turn to have small reward because of what? Intention. Because of the intention. On the other side, many small deeds will get big reward because of what? Intention. Because of intention. So that's why we have to be careful of this issue of ikhlas in general and intention in particular. SubhanAllah. And also, maybe a quick point how we can multiply this by having multiple intentions for the same thing. Yes, inshallah, this will be mentioned in some other ahadith. As we said that we want to go through the ahadith of this book, inshallah, so we cannot spend long time, very long time to discuss one hadith only. This point that you have mentioned is a very valid point. Inshallah, it will be elaborated or it will be, inshallah, mentioned in some details later. So, this is the summary of this hadith. Obviously, this hadith leads to many fawa'id. The key thing, as we said, that 
the intention will decide whether this person is going to be punished in the Akhirah or not. Or is he going to be rewarded in the Akhirah or not. And also this hadith gives excuses for some people who were forced to do evil things or bad things against their will. But the deciding factor is their intention and Allah Jalla wa ala is the only one who knows about their intention. And this hadith also encourages us to keep away from the zalimeen in general, the unjust people in general, the evil people in general, the oppressors in general. Why? Because we might be forced into a situation where we join them while they are going to do fasad. That's why in Sharia in general, Sharia said that don't go and intermingle with the zalimin, with the oppressors, with the enemies of Allah Jalla wa ala, with the disbelievers, unless you are going to enjoy the good or fit with the evil. But just to join them like this, this, okay, might dangerous lead to for uh, dangerous for yourself. And other than dangerous for yourself, adab might be sent by Allah Jalla wa ala, to those people and you are part of them. And this also gives us a very important principle regarding the importance of enjoining the good and forbidding the evil. Because as we mentioned about Surah Al-A'raf, the story of Surah Al-A'raf, those who were saved are those who were enjoining the good and forbidding the evil. And that's why in general, in general, forbidding the evil, yeah, and enjoining the good is one of the obligations upon our ummah, the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa wa sahbihi wa sallam, even if there are just very few scholars are doing this. As the scholar said, the ummah should not be free from any of those who are enjoining the good and forbidding the evil. Otherwise, the adab, okay, will encompass all of them. That's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam said, إِنَّ النَّاسَ إِذَا رَأَوُ الظَّالِمُ وَلَمْ يَأْخُذُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ أَوْ شَكَ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَعُمَّهُمْ بِعَذَابٍ مِنْ عِنْدِي If the people see the oppressor, the zalim, the unjust, doing injustice, committing injustice, and they do not stop him, Allah will encompass all of them by adab. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also mentioned that there are some fawahish, such as, riba and zina, if they become prevalent and no one is enjoining the good and forbidding the evil, trying to minimize them, yes, then the adab will be revealed upon all of them. So we have to be careful about these points. The last thing that I would like to say, in Hadith Abi Sa'id al-Khudri, the Prophet sallallahu said, the one who sees a munkar, he should change it by his hand, if he can. If he can't, then by his tongue. If he can't, then by his what? By his heart and وَذَلِكَ أَضْعَفُ الْإِيمَانِ And this is the weakest level of al-Iman. So at least hate that action. At least he should hate that action. Okay? At least he should hate that action. Why? Because it means that in intentionally he is not happy like those who joined this army and they did not want to join the army. On the day of resurrection, they will be resurrected according to their intention. This means, my dear respected brothers and sisters, that under any circumstance, don't accept, don't be complacent to the haram. Yeah? Even refuse it by your heart, refuse it by your intention if you can't. Now, see, Allah Jalla wa ala is the one who knows whether you can or you can't. So at least hate that Okay. Action. Again, as I said, I don't want to keep repeating this. Each hadith talks about so many things, but we have a very limited time. So we need to talk about the essence of the hadith, which is connected to the chapter. And we will continue in detail in the next Inshallah. episode. Inshallah. Brothers and sisters, please come back to us in the next episode where we shall continue in this first chapter of Ikhlas in Riyadh al-Salihin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. He created the universe To Him belong the heavens and the earth The ever-living, He is the first He's the owner of mercy He sent His messengers To all His creatures Of the 